Welcome back everyone. This is part 22 in our FPS tutorial series and today we're going to be making it so that our player can interact with doors and then in the next tutorial we're going to be making it so that our zombie can interact with doors and then the next one after that we're going to cover locked doors and opening them either with keys or key cards or maybe even have a door that you have to you know switch on power or something like that to be able to open it okay so first of all I just want to send a shout out to Aman Khan who's a subscriber who has actually signed up to Patreon so Aman signed up for the five dollars a month and he's able to download all the scripts for this tutorial series and any new scripts that come out um, as this tutorial series goes along so thank you man I really really appreciate that it's my first uh, Patreon supporter ever um, if more people could sign up at some stage that would be really really um, fantastic as well and I'll be able to make more videos and better content in the future so currently you can actually um, just go into the description of the videos and there's a link for the Patreon there and you can either sign up for $5 a month and get the scripts or you can sign up for $10 a month and be able to download the entire project as we go along. So yeah, I really appreciate that. Anyway, let's get started with the actual tutorial. <clears throat> the, um, the format I'm doing it in today is going to be a little bit different than usual. Um, I'm not going to be writing out the script. I've actually already written out the script and set everything up and I'm just going to go through it with you guys. So you guys decide whether you like it better this way or how I usually do the videos because it doesn't really matter what I think. It's more about what you guys want. So just let me know which you would prefer. So what I've gone ahead and done to start off with is I've got these two door game objects and I've just got these out of the actual level that we're using now you'll be able to find some doors and I've just placed them in this doorway which is the um, doorway at the start of our level and all I've done is I've actually made an empty game object called sliding doors and I've made the left door and the right door children of this sliding door parent here and then what you need to do is you need to make sure that your actual script that we're going to go through soon is attached to the sliding doors game object. You need to make sure that we have an audio source. You need to make sure that we have a box collider that's ticked as trigger. And you can see that's the box collider there. So make sure that you've done that. And then of course we've got the animator because I animated both doors at the same time. One for a door open, which is if I just um, slide this, you'll see both doors open on the same audio on the same animation, sorry. And then I have one called doors closed, and this will start off in the open position and then go back to the closed position, okay? So go ahead and animate them. We've, we've done a lot of animation in this series already, so I didn't want to go through it again. You guys should be able to animate these doors quite easily. And that will give you your animated controller in here. So then what I've gone ahead and done also is I've got a slide door close. I'll do the open first, actually. Okay, and then we've got the... Um, close. Another thing I've gone ahead and already done is basically because we've got this big box um, collider here that's a trigger, if these doors were open and there were zombies on the other side, when we shot tried to shoot the zombies with our gun, because it shoots a ray cast, the ray would actually be blocked by this um, box collider here. So we need to make sure that we can distinguish between different layers with our actual um, pistol ray so that we only 
um, interact with layers that we want and layers that we don't want to interact with we can actually just pass straight through so to do this all I've done is I've gone to layers and I've made a new layer and it's been called door and I've just going to change the layer of the actual main parent sliding doors to door and just say not change children we just want this object only okay we don't want the left and right door to be um, on the layer door as well because what will happen is if we do that we'll be able to shoot straight through our doors even when they're closed and kill enemies on the other side now you might want that that could be fine but for me it would be fine if I was just shooting them through these windows that would be pretty cool but I don't want to be shooting them through a metal door you know it doesn't it'll, it'll make the game a bit too easy I think so it's something we can think about later and try to do it so that we can just um, shoot through these window parts but anyway so go ahead make sure that the sliding doors parent is on the door layer and then all you need to do is go into your pistol script and I've just made this new header and I've called it layers affected these are going to be the layers that are affected by our raycast for our pistol and I've made a public layer mask called layer and then if you go down to our shoot ray on this line of code here where we actually um, send out our ray cast from the shoot point position we send it out forward on the z-axis and then we get some information about what we actually hit with the ray cast within this range and then I've done a comma and added the layer okay so that's all you need to change and it's all ready to go so then when you go back to your pistol script you will notice now that we have the layers affected heading and then we have this um, layer mask called layer and you can set yours to nothing and then go back and I've just I'm just going to select default so we'll be able to interact with default layer and also I may as well just do pickups as well in case we want to shoot our pickups on the ground for some reason I don't know but um, maybe you want bullet holes or something to appear on the pickups when you shoot them as well or some sparks you know so you, you might want to have them as well and that's all I'm going to really need so now you'll notice the door layer that we just made there is not ticked so now it's going to completely ignore anything on the door layer and this trigger this box collider is on the door layer so it's actually just going to pass straight through that now okay so now let's go and actually check out this new script so make a new script called door trigger and it needs to be on this sliding doors parent game object and then you need to make sure you're using unity engine.ui and then we've got some variables here we've got our animator our audio source two audio clips the open and close audio clip and you'll see you need to make sure you drag the audio clips into the corresponding slots up there and then we have these two booleans which are very important and this lets us keep track of whether the door is actually open or closed this one will let us keep track of whether the door is actually locked or not locked okay and then I've done a serialized field text door text now with this one you'll see here I've got a text new text object in there and all I've done where we had our pickup text on our canvas I've just duplicated that and I've made one called door text and I've just dragged it up just above the um, pickup text in case they ever come up on the screen at the same time we don't want them to be overlapping um, there's different ways to do this but just for now this will be fine so our door text will appear there and I've just changed the color and that's fine you can have whatever color you want so once you've actually made your new door text object you can just drag that in to the door text slot here then I have a string and it's just called door string and we're going to use this to be able to change what the door text says depending on whether the door is locked we want it to say the door is locked if the door is open we want it to say the door is closed I mean if we if the doors open we want it to say you can close the door and if the doors open we want it to say um, you can open the door basically so 
Then in our start function, we have door text dot enabled equals false. So we want this to hide from the start, even though it has no text in it at the moment. So it's not it's not going to matter. Like there's no text in here, but just to be safe, I'll just disable it from the very start, and then we make a reference to our audio source and also make a reference to our animator. So make sure they are both on the same game object as this script, okay? If you don't have an audio source and the animator on the same game object as this door script, it's not going to work. So then we have our on trigger stay and on trigger exit, but first we'll have a look at the three methods I've made down here and then these two will make more sense. So I've made a public void open door and the reason why this is public is because I'm going to access this method here with the zombie later on in a, in a separate tutorial. So in our open door we set the is open bool to true because we know now that we've opened we're opening the door and the door is actually open and then we want to enable the door text so it shows on the screen and then we want to play our first animation which is the open and I've used a trigger I'll show you how I've set up the animated controller it's very simple so if you look at my animated controller for the door I have one trigger that's open, one trigger that's closed, and from any state, I either go to close or I either go to um, open. So just make sure that you turn off exit time and you can set the transition duration to zero if you would like as well, and you will be good to go. So obviously you need to spell it the same as me if you're going to type out this code exactly. So However they're spelt here is how it needs to be spelt here, as you know. So then we play our open door audio clip and that's it. And then for the closed door, we set the is open bool to false now because we know the door is closed. We set the um, trigger to close, so we play the close animation and then we play the close audio clip. And then finally we just got the update door UI and with this we'll just enable the actual text so it can be displayed on the screen and then we will set our door text dot text to equal the door string so the door text is going to equal whatever we say the door string is going to say so as you know a string is just usually a string of letters or a sentence it can be numbers as well but we're going to use it to type out a sentence and then it's going to equal the actual text that we've made in our um, canvas. And then we're just going to make that into a string so that um, we're converting the text game object to a string. Okay. And now if we go to our on trigger stay, it's got the, um, the usual collider other. And then we're going to check if the other tag that hits this actual um, trigger collider and obviously this is the trigger collider on our door so this big green box here that's the trigger so if a tag passes through that called player then we want to check these two conditions here so we want to make sure that the door is not locked for a start and we also want to make sure that it's not already open okay and if it's not locked and it's not open we're going to set the door string to equal open door so now this is going to become open door and we can display this text on the screen by calling the update UI method down here after all that then we need to check if the player actually presses the E key. So if the player presses the E key, then we want to open the door. But this will only happen if these two conditions are met up here. So then we'll open the door. If these two conditions aren't met, then we're going to check with an else if, if the door is already open. So if the door is already open, the text we want to display on the screen when we walk up to the door is closed door. 
and then we want to update the door UI so that we can display closed door on the screen and then we need to check again if input get key down key code E if we press the E key then we want to close the door and if these two conditions aren't met and if this condition isn't met the only other real thing that could be going on is the door is locked so just a simple else statement and then we're going to set the string to door is locked and we're going to update the UI so I've added in the functionality for the door to be locked or, or just for us to keep track of whether the door is locked because that's going to make it easier later on when we do the locked doors one okay we're not actually using the locked door at the moment and then we've simply got our on trigger exit which is very easy again we check if the tag player leaves that collider and then we're going to just disable the door text from the screen because now it's actually going to be saying something and we don't want to walk away from the door and still have open door or closed door on the screen okay so we'll just simply disable that when we walk out of the door collider and that's it guys so once you've gone ahead and and done that make sure again that your sliding doors is set to the door layer and that your pistol only is affected by the default and pickups layer for now and then we can go ahead and have a look God, I can't shoot. Um, so we got to open door, and you hear it played the sound, but um, nothing happened, no animation. And this is something I wanted to go over with you guys quickly as well because it's quite handy to know. So basically, if you have a look at the two door game objects here, oops, don't zoom in through game, make sure you zoom in through scene, you'll see up in the top right these game objects are ticked as static and if something's ticked as static unity will think that it's not going to ever move so you're not going to be able to animate it and unity is also going to bake lighting for it so the shadows and um, things like that are going to be actually baked from the start and they're not going to move or change as the game goes on even if um, light source in your game moved it wouldn't change the shadows or whatever for the doors so it also affects nav mesh so if something is marked as static then you can actually put a nav mesh over the top of it nav mesh isn't going to bake over something that could possibly be moved during gameplay because that would defeat the purpose of it making these nice paths for the um, enemy to follow so what you need to do is if you just select both the doors and then you can actually click on this drop down and select nothing and you'll notice that once we've made it not static it unbaked it and it actually changed the color of our doors and you can just put it back on light map static if you would like and it will change it back to the original color because it will rebake the lighting and that is a very easy way to fix it. You've also got other, um, sorry here, you've also got other options. You can make it navigation static so that the nav mesh will, um, the actual nav mesh will stop before the door. Like you watch, if I, if I put it on navigation static as well, and then if I bake the nav mesh, you see now that it stops it recognizes that as an object in the game and it's going to actually stop there so now the zombies would only come to there and they would never be able to go through the door which I don't really want that so I'm going to change mine stop that I'm going to change mine back to just the light map static <clears throat> and we haven't really gone over lighting, but I think we'll do something on lighting at some stage. Um, yours will be set to skybox and def default skybox in there. If you don't have a lightings tab, you can always go to window and then go to rendering and lighting settings. 
and then you'll be able to access these um, all of these different settings here so at the moment our skybox material is just the default unity skybox and our environment lighting is actually coming from the skybox so if you didn't want that you could change that to color or a gradient you could select the color if you wanted the game to be darker you could select the darkness like that um, you can mess around with all these settings you can see now that currently we're using real-time um, lighting for real-time global illumination and we've got mixed lighting for the baked global illumination so this is the bake lighting and it's it's set down here to auto generate so every time you move something in the scene you'll see that it I'll just show you if I move this watch down here so I'll move it to there and you'll see that it rebakes okay it's rebaking the lighting automatically and now it's done the baking so I'll just put that back to where it was and you'll see that it rebakes it back to where it was again as well so we'll definitely do something over, like later on to make the game better we can make it dark and have really cool lighting and stuff like that but there's no point worrying about that kind of stuff yet when we're just setting up the actual functionality of the game okay you, we can't get ahead of ourselves so now that our doors are no longer marked as static they're only marked as light map static we should be able to actually open our doors. You can see now that it's a lot darker. I'll actually change it back lighter because I don't really want it to be the items to show up that dark just yet. So if you go to our door, you'll see it says open door. Press E, and now it says closed door. I press E again, it closes, okay, open. We've got our enemies coming. Close the door, and he'll just walk straight through the door. I oh, know he won't because I didn't rebake the um I didn't rebake the nav mesh. You'll see now I can't shoot the zombies through the through the door, which is what we want. Well, it's what we want for now. So I'll just quickly go back. I'm gonna go to lighting and I'm actually going to just change that back to how a bit lighter anyway. And what we need to do is we need to rebake our nav mesh so that they can actually come through the doors. There we go. So now, if I open the door, you see the zombies just walk straight through the door, okay? And that's going to happen, but we're going to make them actually open the door anyway, so it's not an issue at all. That's exactly what we want for now. Okay? So that is our player able to interact with the door. And in the next one, as I said, we'll be doing the enemy, and I'll get that out as soon as I possibly can. So, yeah, once again, thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate Aman Khan for signing up to Patreon. And hopefully some other people can get on board when they're able to as well. Okay. Cheers, guys. See you in the next one.